now we move on to turn number two. And all exhausted units now are flipped back to their fresh sides. Next, we determine which side has the morale advantage for this turn. Now to determine who wins the morale advantage, each side rolls a die, and the side that has the most casualty points adds the difference to its die roll. The lowest modified die roll wins the morale advantage. And here we can see that the Turks have a total of five casualty points, a leader, and four units. Meanwhile, the Anzacs have four casualty points, so the Turks will have a plus one added to their die roll. So we roll for the Turks, and the roll is a two, modified to a three, and now we roll for the Anzacs, and the roll is a four, so the Turks have the morale advantage. Because the Turks won the morale advantage, they can have five cards in their hand. Now have, they have to decide if they're gonna keep this keep moving card, and they will keep the keep moving card for now. So now, the Turks draw four new cards. Let's take a look at them. They have a submarine attack card, walking wounded, two sniper cards, and the keep moving card they had from turn one. Now the Anzacs can hold up the four cards and they can discard zero or both of the cards that they have. They have two knight attack cards and they will be discarding both of them and drawing four cards. The cards are Heroic Act, Barbed Wire, Field Hospital, and Dig In. Next, the Anzac player can rearrange his ships in the Aegean Sea Zone. And the ships that were in the southernmost zone now move to the middle area. Now we move on to activations, and because the Turks have the morale advantage, they go first. It's important to note that the Turks have reinforcements this turn that enter at Maidos Road and Gallipoli Road. The Anzacs also have reinforcements that will be entering Anzac Cove or North Beach. So the Turks begin by playing one of their cards and this is the Submarine Attack card. And this card allows them to remove an enemy ship from a sea area or one enemy reinforcement unit that is yet to appear. And this counts as the Turkish round. And the mighty Queen Elizabeth sunk by a Turkish submarine and goes to the bottom of the sea. They go to the first British round and there are three ships in the sea area next to Anzac Cove will now fire away at the Turks that are concentrated at Baby 700 before they entrench. Each of the British ships will roll five dice and will need three or less to hit because of the increased height where the Turkish units are. So we start with the queen fires away. And the queen scores one three, and that's one hit. Next to fire is the triumph. Needing three or less, the triumph doesn't roll any hits, but rolled at least one ten, so that will advance the killing time marker. Finally, the Prince of Wales fires away. And it scores no hits, but rolls a 10. In the final tally, only one hit, which will be absorbed by the Turkish leader by flipping his counter to the exhausted side. And the killing time marker is advanced 
to the number seven box. Now the Turks decide to build a shallow trench in Baby 700 and they flip their infantry unit to their exhausted side. So now the Anzacs will fire with the London using the Manica's two hit range bonus of plus one, firing at the Turkish units at Baby 700. These are at a higher altitude than the ships and they're in a shallow trench. So the two hit number goes from four down to two, but the Manica increases the range to three. So three or less is needed. And the British ship rolls five dice. And there is a three and two twos, three hits, but also tens were rolled. So the three hits are assessed and one takes out Major Avni. Another hit reduces the infantry to an exhausted revenant. And the final hit flips one of the machine gun companies to its exhausted side. Notice that the Turks still have a fresh machine gun company. And killing time now goes down to six. Turks smell that the Anzacs may launch an attack with General Birdwood's troops at Russell's top against the weakened forces at Baby 700, but the Turks have some powerful units nearby at Rodendron Ridge. The Turks decide to fire their artillery and elite infantry unit at Rodendron Ridge against the Anzac forces that are in a deep trench at Russell's top. So the Turks fire their artillery unit first. The two hit number is reduced from four to two or less because of the deep trench. But because Colonel Kemal is leading this attack, the range is increased by two up to four or less. So the Turks roll five dice for the artillery attack and they score a three and a two. Two hits, but a 10 is rolled. And now the Turkish elite infantry fires, but it is firing at long range. So what that means is that it will have to roll three or less, taking into account the other one. So the Turks roll three D10s and there is one hit. So the Anzacs suffer a total of three hits and they reduced three of their battalions to their exhausted sides. So that volley by Colonel Kemal, his artillery and elite infantry unit stops the Anzacs in their tracks. Now killing time is reduced to five. The Anzacs still have one more ship in the Aegean Sea area, the Vachante. And it will fire at the exhausted Turkish units on Rodendron Ridge. So the Vachante fires away. Rolls four dice and needs three or less for hits and it scores one hit. Not wanting to lose Colonel Kemal, the Turks remove their elite infantry unit and it is substituted with an exhausted remnant. The Turks don't know how long Baby 700 will hold, especially when the Anzacs engage the Turks there in close combat. So now the Turks decide to move some units into the line. So Lieutenant Colonel Saip at Koja Plain is activated and he moves his unit from there into Hobbs Hill and into Scrubby Knoll through Gunners Hill and with its 
sixth movement point reaches Battleship Hill. The Anzacs now activate their units at Lone Pine. And they decide to leave their machine gun unit and the remnants at Lone Pine and they form a group of two battalions with Brigadier Johnston. This group moves through Wire Gully, through Chatal Derry, and uphill into Hobbs Hill. And in a final dash, move into Third Ridge, which is worth two victory points. Now the Anzac units become exhausted. And the Turks have the option of conducting defensive fire, which they do now. And the Turks roll four dice and they need four or less for hits. And the results are a one and a two, two hits. And the seventh Victoria Battalion has still a defense rating of two, so it can absorb both hits and it is reduced to an exhausted remnant. Now the Anzacs can conduct advancing fire with the Otago MR unit, one die. And normally the die range would be four or less. It is increased by one to five because of Brigadier Johnston, but it is decreased by the shallow trench to four or less. So we roll one D10. And the result is an eight, so that is no effect. The Turks may lose third ridge. But they still have an opportunity to dislodge the Anzacs. They have a battery at Anderson's Knoll, and now it fires at the Anzac units in third ridge. The Turkish leadership cancels out the height advantage that the Anzacs have, so it's four or less for hits, and the Turks roll 4d10. And the results are in one hit, and a 10 is rolled. And the Anzacs eliminate the remnant. And if things don't change during the turn, there will still be close combat at third ridge. And killing time advances now to four. Now the Anzacs decide to enter some of their reinforcements, the 4th Australian Infantry Brigade. The group enters at Anzac Cove and moves in a southerly direction. The Anzac group climbs onto Bolton's Hill and the entrenched Turkish remnants now conduct defensive fire. They roll 1d10 and need 4 or less for a hit. And the result is a 3, 1 hit. So the Anzacs reduce one of their infantry battalions to a remnant and now conduct advancing fire. They roll 3 dice and the 2 hit number is increased by 2 because of Colonel Monash's bonus. There's a minus one modifier for the shallow trench. So it's a five or less to hit. And the Anzacs roll 3d10. And the roll is a two, which is a hit, one hit. That is enough to eliminate the Turkish remnants. Now the Turks enter their reinforcements through Midas Road. Entry into Midas Road cost one movement factor. The group continues its movement into Koja South. And from there, the group moves into Koja Plain. And it drops off its artillery there because artillery cannot move into an area occupied by enemy units. So the rest of the group 
climbs onto third ridge. Here we see the Turkish units spread out. The New Zealanders cannot conduct defensive fire because they're exhausted. The Turks have the option of conducting advancing fire with their three recently arrived infantry battalions. And they decide to do so and maybe save themselves of any close combat. So they roll three dice and need four or less to hit. And the result is a one, one hit. So the New Zealanders eliminate Brigadier Johnson to satisfy the loss. And it seems that there will still be close combat as the situation unfolds on Third Ridge. Anzacs activate Colonel McLagan. And his force now conducts an end run through the valley and reaching Bat Chops Hill. This will force the Turks to divert some troops to prevent him from reaching Chunuk Bair. Onto the Turkish round. They play a sniper card. And they're targeting General Birdwood, a leader which is adjacent to Turkish troops. With the sniper card, we roll a die to see if a leader is eliminated and if it is adjacent to troops that play the card on a one to five, the leader is. So now, we roll 1d10, and the roll is a 7, so the sniper shot misses. But it's still the Turkish turn. Now the Turks bring in more reinforcements. Five units under Major Mustafa, and these units enter at Gallipoli Road. And from there, they reach Koja Deri. At Johnston's Jolly, the Anzacs have the Indian artillery. They fire at the Turkish positions at Baby 700. It's uh, some of them a long shot. Three dice, two or less needed to hit. And the roll is 889, eight, no hits. And the Indian artillery is now exhausted. Now the Turks are at it again. And they play their second sniper card, targeting General Birdwood, which is adjacent to Turkish forces. One to five, and he's killed. And the roll is a nine, so he still survives. Now the Turks on Pine Ridge decide to construct a shallow trench. Now the Anzacs bring in the New Zealand Expeditionary Force artillery as a reinforcement. And it enters at North Beach and climbs up to Walker's Ridge. Now the Turks take two conscript Syrian units from Gunner's Hill and move them to reinforce their positions at Baby 700. The New Zealanders wanting to have a chance to hold on to Third Ridge send Lieutenant Colonel Malone and the Wellington Battalion on a march to join their brothers. And they reach Third Ridge. And 
and the just moved New Zealanders will conduct advancing fire. Note that the Turks cannot conduct defensive fire. They were already exhausted. So the New Zealanders will roll two dice and because of Malone's bonus and the shallow trench, fives or less will be hit. And the Anzacs score one hit. Turks reduce one of their infantry battalions to a remnant. The Turks now fire their artillery, that is at Gabatepe, into Bolton's Hill, where the Anzacs have concentrated a significant number of troops in a shallow trench. This howitzer is pretty intimidating, five dice. And because of Major Ismet's leadership, the Turks will have a plus one bonus. Because of the shallow trench and because the Anzacs are at a higher level, threes or less will be hits. So we roll five to ten. And a one is scored. One hit, but also a ten is rolled. So the Anzacs eliminate the remnant unit to satisfy the loss. And it could have been a lot worse for the Anzacs. The killing time marker advances to the number three box. The New Zealand machine gun company at Quinn's Post now fires at the Syrian conscripts in Gunners Hill. Three dice, four or less, are hits. And they score two hits. That eliminates the Syrian defenders. Now the Turkish machine gun company at Gabatepe fires away at the Anzac units concentrated at Bolton's Hill. And Major Ismet, even though he is exhausted, still provides a leadership bonus. So it's three dice and three or less will be hits. And the roll is a nine, four, ten, no hits. And the killing time marker now advances to the number two box. Now General Bridges makes his move. His force enters the Monash Valley, climbs up to Johnston's Jolly, marches through Quinn's Post, and finally reaches Mortar Ridge. The Turks now fire their fresh machine gun company at Baby 700 against the recently arrived Anzac units at Mortar Ridge. Turks roll three dice and need four or less hits. And they score a one, but also a ten. One hit. The Anzacs reduce one of their infantry battalions to a remnant. And killing time now moves dangerously down to the number one box. On to the Anzacs round, and they play the dig in card, and this allows them to build a shadow trench in an area that contains one of their units or upgrade one of shallow trenches to a deep trench, and they will conduct the uh, construction of a shallow trench in Mortar Ridge. It's the Turks' turn, and they now move General Assad into Battleship Hill. Now it's the Anzacs round. They play the heroic act card, and they can flip an exhausted unit to its fresh side and the unit can be activated again straight away. So they will flip the Wellington Battalion 
to its fresh side and it can be activated again. And it could now fire into the Turkish position at third ridge, but it will decline to do so and it will stay fresh for the upcoming close combat there. The Turks with no more units to activate also pass. And this is the end of the action rounds. Now close combat is resolved. The only area where close combat will occur in this turn is third ridge. And we will be resolving close combat using these uh, displays that I made for close combat resolution when you're playing this game solitaire. Now, each side receives two close combat cards per firepower factor of each unit in the area in which the close combat takes place. And the leader in the same area adds his firepower bonus. So in the case of the Anzacs, they have four firepower factors. So that's eight cards and two more cards because of Lieutenant Colonel Malone's bonus for a total of 10 cards. On the Turkish side, they have three firepower factors. So that is six cards. And notice that Lieutenant Colonel Sevki has a zero bonus on his exhausted side so he adds no cards so we draw 10 cards for the Anzacs and six for the Turks now we place the Anzac cards in their corresponding spaces on the display and they have three bayonet charge two ambush two raid two Creeping Barrage cards, and one Reserve Trench card. Now we place the six Turkish cards on the Turkish display. And they have two Ambush cards, an Infiltrate card, two Raid cards, and one Creeping Barrage card. Now because the Turks are in a shallow trench and they are the defenders, they receive an extra card. So we pull one more card from the deck and it is a Creeping Barrage card. So now they have a total of seven cards and two Creeping Barrage cards. So we will be rolling this special die. It will indicate which of the cards each side will play. And this is done automatically. And you will see how this works. The attackers are the Anzacs. So they roll first and we roll a special die and the result is highest card and in case of tie the lowest valued card in the display. So what the high card means is the most prevalent card in the display of the side that is playing and the cards that have been played already, but no card has been played already. So the most prevalent or numerous card is the Bayonet Charge card because there are three. So the Anzacs play the Bayonet Charge card and the Turks cannot respond. They don't have a Bayonet Charge card and they don't have either a Reserve Trench card. So this uh, close combat is over with the first card played. Now we go to losses for each close combat card that the winning player played, that is one, the losing side loses one damage point. And the Turks will satisfy that by eliminating the remnant unit. Now as to possible losses by the Anzacs, they were the attackers and they attacked a space with a trench. So they would lose one damage point per multiple of three cards played in total by both sides, but not a single multiple ever occurred because only one card was played, so they lose no damage points. 
Now the Turks must retreat one or two areas towards their friendly board edge, which is to the right. They will retreat one area into Koja Plain. The Anzacs are in control of Third Ridge. So we replace the orange cubes with two white ones. And the Anzacs have now five victory points. They're one victory point shy from an automatic victory. Who will have the morale advantage during the next turn? We'll have to see. The Turks have 10 casualty points. And the Anzacs, who lost the Queen Elizabeth, have nine. Will the Turks be able to stop the Anzac advance and hold the line? Will the Anzacs be able to capture one more victory point location and win an automatic victory before more Turkish reinforcements arrive? Stay tuned for the next episode of Assault on Gallipoli. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.